So I'm gonna do, uh, this is the second video. So this will be my upgrades of my Bass Tracker Classic. I have the Heritage. Um, so on the cover itself, I added these buckles, one and a half inches. It's just to uh, make it hold better. And then uh, when it rains, it normally bows right here in the middle. So with the extra buckles, it doesn't bow anymore. Uh, on the trailer itself, I put a step right here, depending on which launch you're at, Sometimes the tongue goes into the water. So if you don't want to get wet, you could stay above the water standing on that little step pad. I added a bunch of these cheap little steps. They're actually pretty nice. I like them quite a bit. I put one right here on this side next to the live well, and then one on the driver's side to help myself pop in. Um, and then I think I will have one on this side and that's just to get on from the passenger side. So not bad. They're not too bad. I think they're about $10 each. But you have to get the hardware, the U-Bolt separately. So that was, they were like maybe $2 each on their own. So that's the trailer. Oh, I got 15 inch wheels. So when I got these wheels, I had to get bigger 15 inch fenders. Um, I think the other one were 13 or 14, but they were hideous. They were super ugly. I couldn't stand the way they look. So I got some nice aluminum rims. Uh, I drive fast too, so I kind of need that diameter um, just to be safe. And then I make sure everything is well greased. I don't mean I, I don't drive too fast, but maybe around 70, 75 sometimes. Um, same thing, I got the, the spare. Um, full size, same size. So that is the trailer. Uh, the boat itself, let's go. Uh, all right, we'll go in the back. So, because with the trailer, I got these buckles. These buckles are here suck. They stick. So I got the buckles that everyone has. I think these are two inches, so they're pretty nice. Um, so back here, everyone gets power poles. I got these um, shallow water anchors. They're actually, oh man, depending on how you fish. I'm not really a bass fisherman. I like to troll. So a shallow water anchor is not really something I'd use all the time. But sometimes when I do use them, like if I'm on the beach, these things are pretty nice. Um, I think I got them for like almost $500 for the pair. And then they just use these 10 inch, or these 10 foot poles. So I put them together, stick it in, get a stab in the ground. So that is one of the upgrades. Oh man, I don't know where to start, there's so much. All right, so. Right here, let's go in the back. So I relocated the batteries. The batteries are actually in the little storage that they came with us. This is a 10 inch or a 10 gallon um, tank. I got an onboard charger. So these are the bunks. I'm gonna wrap the outside of the boat. So that's why I took these off. If you look down there, I added a additional village pump and it's just mainly for security purposes. Um, not on this boat, but on my old boat, one of the bilge pumps failed, so the boat started taking on water. So I'm gonna put have additional bilge pumps on all my boats. So with this gas tank, it doesn't flex when it gets hot or cold. I have it connected with a fuel gauge. So if you come take a look at my gauges, I have fuel gauge to so let me know. I added a speedometer. Speedometer is only like 50 bucks. It comes with, I mean, the boat already is equipped with a line. The line is gonna be this thin little one. It's already ran through for you. I bought a speedo brake before I had it connected right here. But with these bigger engines, if you have this little nipple and then a little hole right there, that's the, the pressure the water pressure for a speedo and then i just kind of slipped it in it's it goes in like maybe a couple inches but it holds and it works i mean it's clearly it's going to be off because of water pressure because it's running off water pressure so if you go um up river it's going to be higher and if you go down river it's going to be lower it's like five three to five miles per hour off either way so that is one of the upgrades. So let's talk about this upgrade. This is the, the 60 horse. So I took this off my old boat, my uh, Pro V-Guide 16, because I put a 90 on that one. So, and then I just 
sold my 40 and then put this one on this um so the only thing i did was i added these support brackets because it's a bigger motor this is actually the same size motor as the 50 but uh the bass trackers on the 50s i believe they have those so i just put them on as well so um i don't consider the prop an upgrade um i have two different props so this is uh a stainless steel prop michigan wheel it's i believe a 10 by 15 or 10 by 16 and then this is a 10 by 15 as well but it's a four blade aluminum so if i'm putting three guys if i'm adding a lot of weight then i'm gonna use the, that one and then if it's just me and you know another person i'll, I'll stick to that one I think the see all right so this is my battery setup so i got my cranking battery and then i got my two deep cycles well they're all deep cycles as well i could probably get rid of this one just to save weight but you know it's pretty much for emergencies so the reason why i moved the batteries is these things are like 50 pounds each so it's 150 pounds it's almost a guy so i put it more towards the front to help balance it with the bigger motor and even with that bigger gas tank. Um, a lot of people use these. So these things, you know, they're not they're not sealed. They leak a lot. So one of the things that I did, as you can see, I have drain tiles on the bottom and then I drilled a bunch of extra holes. So when it just fills up with water, it does get pushed to the back. Um, when uh, I got this boat, it was done rushed. So these lips were really, really sharp, and my cousin actually sliced his finger pretty good. So I added these little aluminum angle. I think it's like a inch by a half or whatever, maybe three quarters by a half. And then this actually would help dissipate the water. So it kind of forces the water to go in through the back, and then it drains. So it doesn't get as wet anymore ever since I added this. And then one thing that I do, it's actually pretty cool. If you're ever going to have people working on your boat, um, you want them to see the the way you have shit set up. So the way your wiring diagram. Um, I have one back here. Before I used to run uh, an 80 and uh, a 24 volt system. But that chill motor was trapped compared to what I have now. So... Let me see, so what do I have? I have a, I think it's a 55 pound. Yeah, so I have a Tar Tarova. It's actually pretty nice. Um, a lot of people, they like the the ones with the pedal. I can't stand the pedal. Um, I like the real estate in the front. So I I got one of these iPilots that you can just control with the remote. So I usually don't use a, pe a pedal, even though it comes with one. And then um, as far as the way you fish, so I use the iPilot mainly for spot locking and then controlling when I'm trolling. So I'll be sitting up here and then I'll probably be going one and a half to two miles per hour on the main motor. And then I just use the trolling motor to guide me left or right. Um, oh yeah, so as far as graphs go, I have a Garmin and then I have a Lorenz. So the Lowrance I use mainly for navigation. The navigation for the Lowrance is way better. It's way superior. And then for finding fish, I got this guy right here. There's also um, a transducer built in. So I could sometimes put a graph up here in the front as well, but I kind of don't. Oh, actually here, let me show you one of my favorite mods. So I got this Minn Kota receptacle. It's, it's big. Because this guy right here used to um, corrode because it would fill up with water. So I turned this one into a cigarette lighter. And then I used that cigarette lighter to connect to the power for my... I think I... Because uh, I have two different ones. I have a Helix and then I have my Garmin. But, but my Helix is a Helix 5. So it's kind of a small graph. But it looks a little bit better connected to this guy, the US2. Um, transducer it's straight up trash i don't recommend it so usually i use a my 360 live or my live scope so i connect those two like right here and i just have it connected to a trolling motor 
um, bracket and then I just connect there. That way I have my graph up front. Um, so with the transducer, you just, you wanna make sure they're connected properly. Um, I think they stop, they stop working after like, as far as reading depth, both of them the same way, like after maybe 33, 34 miles per hour, they'll stop reading. But if you're cruising along, you know, going 30 miles per hour, it can still read depth the whole entire way. So if they're, if they're connected correctly, you know, they're pretty good. You wanna make sure you get one with um, GPS. Um, so this is a little mod that I have. I'm actually gonna move it over to right here, but I kind of did this fast. So I have an aerator pump, a bubbler, and then I just have a blower. And the blower is connected back here to kind of like, if it gets wet and gets muggy, to blow the air out. So the bubbler is just for the aerator, I mean uh, the level, and then the aerator just dumps it. So I have a little bubbler there, then I have the aerator so I could fill it up and then dump it at the same time. So here's the exit. And then right underneath it is where you can see the, yeah, the dump is right there. So never mind this mess. I'm actually working on it right now. Cause I'm gonna add a, a fuse block and then I don't think I'm gonna add any more switches. I'm gonna swap this out though. So this on off switch started to rust. So I'm gonna put a stainless steel one on there. And I only have that because I couldn't find an ignition switch or the, there wasn't enough room on the ignition wire to put a lot of stuff on it. Um, so what else is there? I think that's the rest of my boat. I added these things. It's not really mod, but it, they're pretty good for cup holders and then for rod holders. I added some rod holders or rod straps. One of the places I store the rods is right in here. And then right here, I got one right above the live well as well. So I took off the base because I never used the chair up here. Um, I put this lid on here because eventually I'm gonna build a deck. But as you can see, I store stuff here. So usually with the cover on, I'll store coolers and whatnot in this little compartment. So that's why I really can't, you know, deck it just yet because I use it the space. But eventually I'll do a short deck and I'll probably go to like right here. And then I don't care about the this rod locker storage. I got holders for these guys too. I store my light pole on that side. And then the light is on underneath the driver's seat for the front. So I think I keep my anchor in that in that compartment. So yeah, I mean I just use that for the anchor and then those um those buoys or whatever you call them, the fenders. <coughs> um what else is there? I think that's pretty much about it with my modifications. <laughs>